Hi. Now in this video tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can use a particular rule called the sine rule for finding the length of the side of a triangle. And we usually use this rule when we're dealing with non-right angle triangles, triangles that don't have an angle of 90 degrees in them. And if you want to find a length of a side, let's say we go for this side here, let's call it X, okay? Then what you need to have if you're going to use the sine rule is basically the opposite angle to the side that you're trying to find. Now the opposite angle to this side is the one over here. All right? Let's just mark that in. Looks to me to be about say 40 degrees. So we'll mark that in as 40 degrees. You can't work out X just from this information. You also need another side and its opposite angle. So you could have say this side here and know this opposite angle. Or you could know this side and its opposite angle over here. Well let's just suppose we're given this side down here. Let's say it's 2.6 centimeters. Then you need to know the opposite angle. That's this one over here. And let's say that this angle here is 30 degrees. So we've got a side and its opposite angle. And we've got to find another side, but we know its opposite angle. So if you've got a situation like this, you can use what we call the sine rule. And I'll show you how it works. Basically, what you do is you put the side that you want, in this case x, and you divide it or compare it with the sine of its opposite angle. In this case, sine of 40 degrees. And hence we get the name the sine rule because we're using the trigonometric function sine. Now, this is equal to the same comparison. 2.6 aside over the sine of its opposite angle over sine of 30 degrees in this example. And there you have the sine rule where you compare one side with the sine of its opposite angle and it's equal to comparing another side with the sine of its opposite angle. So all we need to do now is just rearrange this equation to get x. So we need to multiply both sides of the equation by sine 40. If we multiply the left hand side by sine 40 degrees then we'll just be left with x. And if we multiply the right hand side by sine 40 we'll have 2.6 times sine of 40 degrees and you can either divide the 2.6 by sine 30 or put it all over sine 30. It makes no difference you should get exactly the same answer. So to work this out, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode and just type in 2.6 times the sine of 40 then all divided by sine of 30. And what you should get is 3.342 and so on. And let's round this up to a reasonable degree of accuracy and in this example, we seem to have a measurement over here to one decimal place. So we'll take this to one decimal place. So that'd be 3.3. Don't forget the units, which would be centimeters, and to state that uh, approximation. And that, in this case, was one decimal place. Okay, so hope you've got that idea. And what I'll give you is another example. You might like to pause this video and what you've got to do is to work out what x is. So if you just pause the video and just have a go and then come back and I'll show you how to do it or you can check your answer. Okay, so let's see how you got on. Well I'd imagine the first thing that you do is most probably write x divided by and you've got a problem. We've got a problem because 
opposite this side we need this angle and you most probably might have thought well we haven't got that angle well, we can call that angle theta say the Greek letter theta so what this would be is x over sine of that angle theta and that would equal another side over the sine of its opposite angle. Well it's clearly going to be 5.3 is one side over the sine of its opposite angle. So what we've got then is 5.3 divided by the sine of 60 degrees. But the problem is, as I say, what is theta? Well we can work out theta because we can say something along the lines but theta equals we should know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So we can work out theta by doing 180 degrees, take away the sum of 60 degrees and 50 degrees. So 60 and 50 is 110, take it away from 180 and you've got yourself 70 degrees. So even though theta was not marked in, the opposite angle to x, we could work it out. Okay, now that we've got what theta is, we can multiply both sides of this equation by sine theta, or the sine of 70 degrees, and that will enable us to get x. So we therefore have x equals 5.3 times sine theta, or in this case, sine 70 degrees, and that's all divided by sine of 60 degrees. So again, all you need to do is just get on your calculator, make sure it's in degrees mode, type this in and you should find you get 5.7508 and so on. And if we were to round this say to one decimal place we'd have x equals 5.8. Don't forget those units, it's meters this time and the accuracy is one decimal place, one dp. Okay so I hope you've got that. Now if you were to look in any textbook or formula book, you'll most probably see the sine rule introduced to you like this. You'd see a triangle and we label the angles in the triangle A, B and C. They don't actually mark them in like uh, an angle like that A and then B and C, but nonetheless we still call them angle A angle B and angle C. And the sides opposite the angles are given by small letters. So little a is the side opposite angle A. And little b is opposite side B and little c is opposite the angle C here. And we give the rule, the sine rule, as A over sine A, this side compared with the sine of angle A, is exactly the same, equals to another side, B, over the sine of its opposite angle, B, is exactly the same as this side, C, over the sine of angle C. So it looks maybe a bit confusing having a couple of equal signs in, but what we do is we just pick an appropriate pair of sides and angles, as I've done here and here. So I hope that makes some sense to you and uh, that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.